Hello, I'm John McNamara. I'm the Information Architect for IBM Messaging, and today I'm with a couple of legends from Hursley, and we're going to talk about IBM API management, but with a real focus on security. Before we start, though, let's introduce ourselves. Hi, my name's Michelle, and I'm an Information Developer for API Management. Hi, my name is Andrew Daniel. I've been with IBM API Management for a couple of years now, but I focus on security and the web UI. It's lucky you're here then, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the first question we should ask is then, um, a bit of context setting, what is IBM API Management? So IBM API Management is one of our kind of newer products in IBM where we start tackling uh, the creation and management of web APIs. And web APIs today are what we like to think of as what websites were in the 90s. Every company wants to have them. Every business needs to start utilizing them so that they can expose their information Mm -hmm. to things like uh, mobile apps and websites and aggregators and comparison websites. So if you take, for example, insurance companies, they want to expose their uh, insurance products and one way to access them is to go to their website or you can use a comparison website. Some famous ones involve Meerkats, for example, uh-huh. and they utilize those web APIs to talk to those services quite easily and quickly. And API management uh, from IBM helps companies do this with very little effort and do it very quickly. And they add extra layers such as um, analytics and security. So why is API security important? Security is very, very important. I mean, it's a standard of technology today. You don't want to expose information to the whole world that you don't want to. So one example I like to think of is there's many different types of APIs that you can expose. One example is flights, Mm -hmm. Um, flight information, when it takes off, when it lands, whether it's on time. And that's something you kind of want everyone in the whole world to see. When it comes to things like Facebook, for example, um, and you've got personal information on there, you've got your name, your full name, you've got your email address, and increasingly more and more personal information such as addresses and date of birth, phone number, uh, it starts getting very, very specific. And you, you don't want anyone, any old Joe to look at that. And that's why security is important because we need to make sure that only the right people and the right applications and services can see that information. Right, so at what point do you secure an API? So you need to start thinking about security for an API when you start designing an API. So if you've got a service uh, like a shop, for example, um, and you want to start exposing that, you might think of how you start building that web web APIs out of that information. So the catalogue of products would be one section and then maybe you start having user management for the customers so that they can start dealing with their basket and their contact details and history of purchases. When you start thinking about how you start separating that, that's when you need to start thinking about security. You need to start thinking about how you will separate what is secure and what is not secure. And um, what different types of security are there? Okay, so there's a huge breadth of security that we can start applying. So um, you need to start from the point of where an application or a user starts communicating with the API. So that's the transmission of the data between the user or the application and the server. So for that, we tend to encrypt. So you've probably been to websites where you've got a little padlock on the address bar and that means that that's using what we call HTTPS, the secure protocol for HTTP, and that encrypts all of the data that goes between the user and the server. Um, From there you start um, having mechanisms to ensure that the the user that is allowed to see the data is the right user, so we have authentication mechanisms. A a good example is um, when you have, say, a mobile application, you want to connect it to Twitter. And when you try to do that, you click a button which says connect to Twitter and then a little dialogue appears which lets you sign in. And that's very a one way of authenticating to ensure that you are that user that accesses that Twitter information. And what about the other security features in API management? So on top of the couple that I just mentioned now, so we 
obviously enable HTTPS for all of our API transmission. We enable OAuth security so that any consumers of the APIs that are exposed in IBM API management are authenticated correctly. And we can back that using LDAP, for example, which is a, a good corporate industry standard for authenticating uh, users. We also have um, a way to make sure that the, the application that is registered to use the APIs um, is uh, authenticated as well by having them provide an identification mechanism called App ID and uh, optionally App Secret as well. Okay, so what is an App ID and an App Secret? So we expose a lot of the APIs that the users create in IBM API management using a developer portal, which is a very unique and useful piece of the product, which means that all APIs are automatically documented and automatically secured and exposed so that people such as people in their basement can write, start writing their applications for that really juicy information that you've exposed with APIs. We, as I, IBM API management starts um, dealing with those users who create the applications by having them create a username and password and then when they create applications they need a unique identifier for their application which is stored in stored in IBM API management and is then used to identify themselves so that they can use the APIs. And then we can start doing things with that information. We can start restricting them to certain thresholds, such as maybe 100 calls per minute, unless they pay more. And that's a way to monetize that information with APIs and also keep it quite secure. Okay, so it sounds like there's a lot of checking going on on both sides. Does API management make this simple? Of course it does. <laughs> so the main point of IBM API management is that we do it entirely in a web browser user, user interface. It's a lot of drag and drop or just options that you click and select. So for example, setting up OAuth is just a matter of a couple of checkboxes. Which type of OAuth do you want? And that's it. It's ready to go. All of this is designed to be very, very simple and to not really need much knowledge of how to set them up. It will need a bit of knowledge on why you need to add the security and what the appropriate security is. Okay. Well, I think you just answered my um, question, which was, you know, do you need to be a security expert in order to implement authentication or authorization? It probably helps if you've got a, a basic understanding of the types of security and the reasons to have certain security in certain places. Like I was saying earlier, you may not need to secure an API which is just to expose information such as weather or flight information, but you might want to take more careful consideration when it comes to personal information and identifiable kind of secret stuff. Awesome. So um, why can I find out more information about IBM API management? Well, John, luckily for you, I co-authored an IBM Red Book earlier this year. That is fortunate. <laughs> just for you, just for right. this conversation. Right. That IBM Red Book is titled Managing and Exposing External Web Services with IBM API Management. I may be a bit wrong on that Catchy. name. <laughs> <I like> it. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. It does. If you, if you search for it, you'll be able to find it quite easily on the internet. And also, I think there's some useful tutorials in there, isn't there, that people can follow. Yes, and uh, as usual, yeah, uh, searching for IBM API management will un undoubtedly unleash a wealth of information out there. Awesome. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll find the book, put the link in the notes uh, with the podcast, and um, yeah, thank you so very much for putting along. It's been a joy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, John.